First of all, the first premise is that the mastermind principle is the medium through which one may procure the full benefits of the experience, the training, the education, and the specialized knowledge and influence of others as completely as if their minds were in reality one's own. Isn't that a marvelous thing to contemplate? That whatever it is that you lack in education or in knowledge or in influence, you can always uh, obtain it through somebody who has it. The exchange of favors, the exchange of knowledge, is one of the greatest exchanges in the world. It's a very nice thing to engage in business where the exchange of money makes you a profit, but I would a whole lot rather exchange ideas with somebody, give a man an idea that he didn't have before and receive in return one that I didn't have, than I would do it, make an exchange of money. You, uh, of course, know that Thomas A. Edison was perhaps the greatest inventor the world has ever known. He was uh, dealing all the time with many uh, of the sciences, and yet he knew nothing at all about any of the sciences. You'd say it would be impossible for a man to succeed in any undertaking unless he were educated in that field. I was astounded when I first talked to Andrew Carnegie to hear him say that he personally didn't know anything about the making or the marketing of steel. And uh, I was so astounded at that statement, I said, well, Mr. Carnegie, just what is your uh, part in this job here? What, what part do you play? Well, he said, I'll tell you the part that I play. My job is to keep the members of my Mastermind Alliance working in a state of perfect harmony. And I said, is that all you have to do? He said, well, have you ever tried to get any two people to agree on anything for three minutes in, in, in succession in your life? I said, well, I don't know that I have. Well, you said you try it someday to see just what kind of a job it is. To get people to work together in a spirit of harmony is one of the greatest of uh, human achievements. And then Mr. Carnegie went on to uh, break down his mastermind uh, group, to describe each one individually, to tell what part he played. One was his uh, metallurgist. One was his chief chemist. One was his uh, plant works manager. And one was his legal advisor. One was the chief of his financial staff. And so on down the line, there were over 20 of those men working together whose combined education, experience, and knowledge constituted all there was known about the making and the marketing of steel at that time. And Mr. Carnegie said it wasn't necessary for him to know about it. He had men all around him who did understand the making and the marketing of steel. And that was his job, to keep them working in perfect harmony. And the second premise... An active alliance of two or more minds in a spirit of perfect harmony for the attainment of a common objective stimulates each individual mind to a higher degree of courage than that which is ordinarily experienced and prepares the way for that state of mind known as faith. You know, in the, uh, driving an automobile, every so often the battery runs down and you have to do something about it. You come out some morning, you step on the starter, nothing happens. I know people who get out of bed in the morning do the same thing. <laughs> Nothing happens, except they feel badly, they don't want to put on their shoes, they don't want to get dressed, they don't even eat breakfast. Now, they, uh, they need a... Uh, what, what do they need? They need the batteries charged, of course, and they have to have a source for doing it. It's a mighty fine thing if a man gets up in the morning feeling like that, and if he can have a little talk with his wife, for instance, and she's a good coordinator, and she helps to charge his batteries. The chances are, when he comes home that night, he will come home with all of the rabbit skins that he went out to get. And the third premise... A mastermind alliance properly conducted stimulates each mind in the alliance to move with enthusiasm, personal initiative, imagination, and courage to a degree far above that which the individual experiences when moving without such an alliance. In my own uh, early beginning, I had a mastermind alliance of three people. I had an alliance with, my, with Mr. Carnegie and with my stepmother. And we through three people nursed this philosophy through the stages when everybody else was laughing at me and making fun of me for undertaking to serve the richest man in the world for 20 years without any compensation. And uh, there was a whole lot of logic to what they were saying, because at that time I wasn't getting very much compensation out of it in the way of money at least. There came a time, however, when the laughing was on the other side of the face. But that took a long time, and there was plenty of blood and tears shed, I'll assure you, before I got to the point at which I could laugh back when the people laughed at me. But the uh, relationship between we three people, my stepmother and Mr. Carnegie and myself, enabled me to offset all of this uh, 
fun making that was thrown at me by my relatives and my friends and everybody who knew who, what I was engaged in. Now, there are times, you know, when if you undertake anything above mediocrity, you're going to meet with opposition, you're going to meet with people who will chide you and uh, poke fun at you, and uh, most of them will be right close to you, some, some of them perhaps your own relatives. You need some source to which you can turn when you're going to aim above mediocrity to get your batteries charged and to keep them charged so that you won't quit and the going is hard and so you won't pay any attention when somebody criticizes you. You know, criticism falls off my back just like a water off a duck's back, or more than that, like a, a bullet off a rhinoceros' hide. <laughs> but I'm absolutely immune, absolutely immune to all forms of criticism. Whether it's friendly or unfriendly, it makes no difference to me whatsoever. I'm just immune, immune to it, that's all. And I became immune because of my relationship with certain people through whom I built up an immunity under my mastermind alliance. If it had not been for the uh, relationship with my stepmother and Mr. Carnegie, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you folks tonight. You wouldn't be here as students of this philosophy, and this philosophy would not be spread all over the world, helping millions of people. Because I had a million opportunities to quit. At least a million opportunities. And every one of them looked very alluring. And almost sometimes it seems as if I were stupid if I didn't quit. But this marvelous relationship, I could always go back to Mr. Carnegie, I could always go run into my stepmother and we'd sit down and have a little chat and she'd say, stand by your guns. You'll come out on top. I know you will. <clears throat> she once said, at a time when I didn't have two nickels to rub together, as my enemies were saying, she once said that you are going to be the richest member of the Hill family far and away. I know it. I, I can see it in the future. Well, uh, if you would uh, take all of my riches and put them together, I suspect that I have more riches than all of my uh, relatives put together for three generations back on both sides of the house. Uh, that's true. And my stepmother could see that. She could see that what I was doing it was bound to make me rich. Now, I'm not, I don't have reference alone to uh, m monetary riches. I have a reference to the, those higher and broader riches that you find when uh, you get to where you can render service to so many people. And the fourth premise, to be effective, a mastermind alliance must be active. It must be active. You can't just form an alliance with somebody and say, no, we, that's it, we've got it. I'm lined up with this person, that person, the other person. We've got a mastermind alliance. It amounts to absolutely nothing until you become active. Every member of the alliance has got to step right in there and start pitching. Mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, every way that is necessary. They must engage in the pursuit of a definite purpose and they must move with perfect harmony. 